Ja, hallo. Vielen Dank für die Einladung. Hello, thanks for the invitation. Like most of you know, the Süddeutsche is based in Munich. And since I will try to keep my footprint as small as possible, I traveled here by train. The disadvantage being that it takes quite a long time, so I had to get up very early today. The benefit being, once you're in the train, it's very relaxed. So I had a window seat, I saw the landscape pass me by, I saw the Chiemsee and the Waldersee and Chiemsee. And when we arrived at uh, Salzburg, I saw the castle, and in St. Pauli, I saw the Klangturm the sound tower. But something I didn't see all the time was the train, the train I was sitting in. Why am I telling you that? Well, that's quite a platitude. But I believe that this story says everything that we need to know about how to lead in the time of digital change. It's like uh, trying to observe the train that you're sitting in. It's almost impossible. So all those who want to give us advice on digital change are suffering from a problem. Namely, they don't know, at least not exactly. We're all in this for the first time. There are hardly any role models how to combine online and offline worlds. And where we can't rely on textbooks or saying, well, we've always done it like that, so it's a tradition, well, there's always friction and mistakes are being made, and there's some uncertainty. And this is why the second thing that I would like to tell you about how to lead in times of digital change is the following. We need to learn how to deal with our own insecurity and uncertainty. We need to just accept that there are no simple answers. And I will admit that this can feel terrible. Some of us react by being shock frozen and others react with anger and then often this leads to irrational behavior in terms of the new situation. But of course there are also a lot of colleagues who are open and constructive in dealing with this new change. Those who want to understand how the laws of journalism develop in the internet and those who want to know how it feels not to have a deadline of the printer, but always having to be faster and faster. Those who want to know how it feels to always be measured and rated and to who want to draw conclusions from these figures to be able to do their job better. Now, if you want to overcome the challenges of digitization, then we, the editors in chief, can no longer just deal with content alone. Don't get me wrong, content or good content is, of course, the foundation. And I'm saying this as the editor in chief of a paper that published the Panama Papers. It's the home of the good editorial and the wonderful reportage. And we're proud of that, and we need to promote this. But if we don't also talk about distribution channels and functioning business models, the best of contents would be at risk, and we have to actively face this risk. In the current media that want to do better journalism are uh, basing themselves on the interests of the users. I'm not the first one to tell you that. But without the attention of readers, even the most uh, beautiful text is without any impact. Sustainable publishing requires good language, good content, good understandability, but it also needs to be adapted to the new circumstances. And this process of change, well, this is uh, something all publishers need to face. We from the Süddeutsche Zeitung, like all major players, are often viewed very critically. I read about myself that I'm considered to be a tough and sometimes harsh manager who hardly has any journalistic appearance. Well, when I read this, I wondered what obsolete picture of publishing comes to the fore here, as if only the football player who scores goals counts, and as if the management and the coaches don't have the, an influence on the success of a football team. Just a striker who scores goals. 
So there's clever essays, the great reportage, and the clever analysis. And there's also other skills that are required and that play just as important role as the others. We need to work with young journalists, build up young talent, forming a team, developing the format, dealing with new business models, and a new generation of readers and users. The harder making money becomes for us, the more we are forced to deal with workflows, processes, and their optimization. In the world of football, this is like the invention of tactics. Today, we need coaches who are not just saying we'll go out and play ball, but who have a plan and a system that is and has been unusual for many colleagues. There aren't a lot of industries, and this brings me to my quote, where there's a lot of eccentrics and individualists as in ours. A lot of us believe that only chaos produces true creativity. And I think that topics such as this one are just profane and obnoxious. But we all know how the world of digitization is destroying the traditional business model of publishers. And we also know how fast these development cycles and how dynamic the market is in which we're moving. We have to face the question how our publishing houses can remain profitable, how to retain subscribers and win new ones. We have to make sure that we are fit for today so that we have a future. Because it is not self-evident that there will be a future for all of us. We have to work for it. And that's the only way that we can keep our independence. Now, when it comes to other industries, we are always quick to make suggestions and recommendations. But when it comes to ourselves, there's a lot of uncertainty. We need to face this uncertainty. The concerns of our colleagues need to be taken seriously, and we need to turn them into hope together. Because hope means that we have a future we can shape, and it's worth fighting for in spite of all contradictions and resistance. If we want to be successful with our content when designing new products, be it analog or digital, we should have a stronger exchange with user researchers, product managers, designers, and yes, also with colleagues from the advertising industry. That doesn't mean, of course, that our independence should be given up and we should just bow to the wishes of the advertising customers. But it is not a sign of independence to refuse to have an exchange with other disciplines. I think we are obliged to consider whether the business models are viable. We need to say goodbye to hierarchies and top-down structures. We need a matrix-based organization. That's a challenge for editors, because for a long time, they were the sole rulers in the houses. The second level of reflection doesn't affect organization, but ourselves. And this is why dealing with that issue is even more difficult. We're talking about questions such as, what are my values? And what is the attitude that I want my employees to feel? Am I ready myself to change? Am I explaining change and our strategies how to deal with change? And do I embody what I expect my colleagues to do? This is why I'm here today and talk about uh, leadership in times of digital change. Because the more unstable the environment, the more we need a sense of orientation or leadership. That applies to society, but also for our editorial desks. Let us not delude ourselves. We have a very uncertain environment. And the question is how we communicate, how we give certainty in times of uncertainty, and how we inspire people, even without having a master plan in our drawer, how to make money with journalism. Leading in times of digital change is more complex because we're forced to change more quickly because we can't have a secure revenue and uh, we need to adapt our business models to make sure that this will work today and in future. And because we have employees for whom these changes are strenuous and sometimes they defend themselves against those changes. We need to face those challenges. We need to be more 
leaders than ever before. This is indispensable, and our survival depends on it. And yes, that also means that sometimes we need to discuss with each other, and that too is what makes the Süddeutsche Zeitung. We should not only have great content in all kinds of formats, but we need to be decent in how we deal with each other in order to make this paper successful. Actually, it's never been as easy to prepare our stories in an impressive way. And never before have we had as much technical support to disseminate those stories. So let's use these opportunities. Thanks.